Hello, I welcome you all for this NPTEL lecture on earthquake resistant design of formations. Today, we are going to talk about 38th lecture of this course. And this lecture is part of the last module of the course. That is the sixth module, which is on resilience topics. So what we are going to talk today is foundations on slopes. And under the miscellaneous items, as we discussed in the last lecture, we are going to talk about two topics. One is rock foundation numerical examples, which we have covered in lecture 37. And today we are going to talk about cell foundation on slopes. And we will continue that in the next lecture also. So when we talk about cell foundation on slopes, these are the topics which we are going to cover. That is first is its background. What is the reason for it? Why we require? Then steady bearing capacity. Then we are going to talk about seismic bearing capacity, codal provisions, and finally some numerical examples. So today in this first lecture on this topic, we are going to talk about background and static bearing capacity. And in the next lectures, the remaining three topics that is seismic bearing capacity, codal provision, and numerical examples will be discussed. So let's talk what is the background here. So when I go on the background, it is like this. You know that in hilly areas, most of the construction is all required to be done on the slopes. And because there is no flat ground, in that case, the, this requires that foundation is need to be placed on slopes. And even in that case, even if you assume that the slope is stable, and uh, when foundations are constructed on these stable slopes, still its bearing capacity is not the same as uh, when you construct the same foundation on the flat ground. So this is very important issue. And that we are going to talk about that. And this is uh, and miscellaneous. So this is an advanced topic, a little bit. And this reduction, which happens in bearing capacity, is mostly on account of change in the values of dimensionless bearing capacity factors, which get reduced due to the slope as the slope angle increases. If slope angle is zero, then there is no change. Further, these factors reduces as seismic acceleration increases. So that last part, seismic acceleration, we'll discuss in the next lecture. Today, we are going to talk that how the effect of slope is on the bearing capacity of foundation. Or I put it this way, that when the slope angle increases, what will happen to the bearing capacity of the foundation? How we can account that? And we, our discussion here, when we talk about foundations, will be only up to bearing capacity. We are not going to talk about settlement because this is already an advanced topic. And what I'm going to talk today is from taken from many of the research papers, which will be referred here and which will be really acknowledged. So let's talk about that. First, when we talk about aesthetic bearing capacity, much work has been done by the earlier and uh, which is kind of a fundamental work, which could be covered in this uh, you know, the lecture rather than going in much in deep in the research work. So for example, the first work on the uh, bearing capacity in slopes was uh, done by Mehrov in 1957. Then Hansen and Isaac, they have carried out their work, uh, the publication in 1970 and 75 have come. Then uh, Saran, Sood and Handa, which is from uh, uh, India only, 1989 have presented something that how the effect of slope can be accounted when we determine the bearing capacity of the uh, shallow foundation. Then, then some work while done by Jemperlein uh, using the centrifuge test, 1988. So we are going to talk about that. And finally, Graham et al. also given some charts to account for the effect of slopes on the bearing capacity of foundations. So let's discuss one by one. So while discussing, let me acknowledge that whatever I'm going to talk, that the material has been taken from these papers and the charts and other things, and that is really acknowledged that this is like uh, uh, what, what are the, has been advances in the research. So let's see what has been done by Mehrov in 1957. So as published in 1950, uh, this is uh, long back, but it's still for the bearing capacity, or because it is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this part is not covered earlier. So that's why we are discussing another the resilience topics is being an advanced topic for, for this course on earthquake resistant design of foundations. What you could see on the slide, there are two figures. One figure on the left hand side is 
showing where the foundation is on the uh, face of the slope. Okay, that means it is not uh, it is uh, passing through the slope itself. While on another case, uh, foundation is not on the slope, but it is at a some certain distance b, small b, away from the slope. But still, the bearing capacity of this foundation in the second case also get affected with the presence of this slope. So these two things we are going to discuss. So what Mehrhoff in 1957 proposed a theoretical solution to determine the ultimate bearing capacity of a cello foundation. This is located on the face and top of the slope. So what you have in the first figure, what the first figure shows nature of plastic zones under a rough continuous foundation on the face of slope. So what are the details here? Capital B is the width of the foundation. DF is the depth of foundation, which is normally, you know, uh, DF is uh, measured from the ground level to the base of the footing. So you know the base of the footing, but ground level is not here. So what is done here, this will be measured from where this footing is intersecting at the slope at the down level. Okay, so that it is not from this point, rather this point where this footing is intersecting with the slope and below this point, what is the depth of the base of the footing? That is the DF that will be counted as the, the depth of the footing. Then under this footing is subjected to what is called the surcharge queuing. Okay, and this slope have met an angle beta with, this is making an angle beta with horizontal. So beta is the angle of inclination of the slope. Q is surcharge acting on the at the base of the slope. B D F. Now coming to here, if we have three zones as the, in the bearing capacity as usual, so this angle is 90 minus 5. That means this is 45 degree plus 5 by 2, and this is 45 degree plus 5 by 2. This is normally considered uh, linear, uh, right? And then this is log spiral. So normally, and this angle is if you make an angle 90 minus 5 where it cuts at D and then ultimately if you extend this load spiral, this will join at point E. So this way we can have all the details here. In the second case, because the footing is on the not on the face of the slope, rather footing is on the top of the slope with width B and you could see here again beta is the angle of slope and you could see here height of the slope, which was not visible in earlier case. Then you have BF, which is from ground level to here, 90 minus. So one additional parameter, which is coming in addition to here in the first case, that is setback distance. That is, this is the, uh, this is basically top of the slope. And from here, what is this? Uh, if you have the distance to the footing is small b. So as naturally the, the, in general, one can expect that as the value of B increases, in that case, if you are going away from this point, when the value of B increases, in that case, the effect of slope will decrease. So there is called critical setback distances, which is given by some of the uh, researchers differently. So when the value of B increases, naturally the effect of slope will decrease. So after a certain point, there is no effect of slope. So let's discuss. So both the situations, the Merov has given some charts, and before we discuss the charts, let's discuss that how the bearing capacity is determined by as presented by the Merov. The ultimate bearing capacity can be expressed by this expression, which is same as a Tarjagi's theory, as we discussed already. T and C plus Q and Q plus half gamma B in gamma, and Q is here nothing but as we discussed earlier also that this Q can be find out. What is this Q? Q is simply here you have Q is nothing but gamma B. That gamma is the unit weight of the soil and B F is the uh, depth of the protein. So this is because that once you fix the, the depth of protein, then this term will be also fixed. Then this relationship can be expressed in the following form. And when we talk about in the following form, then you need to understand that uh, QU, uh, NC and uh, NQ. 
uh, because the, this uh, this uh, the second term is split into two parts. Some effect is taken into the C, so the present NCQ, and most of the effect is come in lambda Q. So the above equations, what has been done by Mero, that they have given only two coefficients, NCQ and N gamma Q. And uh, that means this uh, the bearing capacitor NQ has been eliminated. So the factor NC depends on NC and NQ, while N gamma Q depends on N gamma and N. Thus, instead of three factors, only two bearing capacitive uh, capacity factors are used. And you know that these bearing capacity factors are dimensionless, there is no dimension. Now, coming to for purely quasi soil, that is when phi equal to zero, then you know that uh, this Q can be given by C and CQ because the second term will be zero. For purely quasi-less soil, that is when C equal to zero, so simply you can have Q equal to half gamma B and gamma Q. So for purely quasi soil or purely, you require only one of these factors. Then Merov also defined the stability number N as, which is defined as gamma into H divided by C where gamma is the unit weight of the soil, H, and C is the basically the cohesion. So if you have the large C value cohesion, then the stability number will decrease. If you have small cohesion, then it will increase, or it could also increase with gamma and H. So let's see that's, uh, this in terms of C. So for example, for cohesionless soils, the stability number will be very high. So when H is height of slope, C cos n and gamma unit weight of slope. So with this parameter N S and having, let's say that uh, now the issue is the how this NCQ and gamma Q, which is used by Mero, is given by. So the charts here is give these values. These charts are for the case, bearing capacity factor for a steel foundation, when this foundation will be a phase of slope. That is the first case which we have discussed. And in this case, you have two charts. The first charge is for bearing capacity NCQ, and another chart is for N gamma Q. Okay, so there are two charts. And on y axis, you have NCQ or N gamma Q. NCQ is varying from 0 to 8, while this N gamma Q is varying from 1 to 600. And one thing you need to notice that this uh, for N gamma Q, this is in the lower than the scale. While on x-axis in both cases, you have inclination of slope, which is going from 0 to 90 degree in the first case, but in the second case, it is restricted up to 45 degree, because uh, beyond 45 degree, it will not be tenable for that uh, once you have this, if you don't have a particularly cohesion in the soil. So, so anyway, so in the first case, when we talk about NCQ, there are two curves, one is d by b equal to 0, which is the solid line, while the second is rotated line, and this rotated line is the case when your depth of footing equal to width of footing. But for rotated line, there is only one line, one curve, which is when the uh, slope uh, stability factor n is equal to zero. So when one thing is here, let's consider for d by b equal to one, that is a rotated line here only. You could see for this case, as the in inclination of slope increases, Bearing capacity factor NCQ decreased significantly. This was the case when d by b equal to 1. Again, another case when d by b equal to 0 is shown here with the solid line. So the result is similar with the only difference is that this was a curve. This is linear. Line. So that means what you could see, you have in this both the cases, that means when the uh, d by b is 1, then effect of slope is large compared to when d by b equal to 0. That means the value decreases very fastly of, uh, for the case when you are embedded footing. So as a result, your depth of footing is going to make a difference on the bearing case. Then once you have here, uh, then what you have, we have uh, here, when the stability number ns is increasing, in that case, when the stability number is increasing, what will happen here? That with the stability number, you could see for the same inclination of slope, the bearing capacity factor is decreased. So this is the result because we uh, basically you could see that perhaps it could be the reason that the when C is uh, uh, NSC will increase when the C decreases, and when C decreases, 
then it is expected that the bearing capacity factor NCQ will also may have uh, change also with that uh, with, with, for different values of C. Now, what you have here in the second case, when you want to calculate the value of n gamma q, you don't have the effect of slope uh, stability factor. However, you have the effect of angle of internal friction phi. And this first case, integration of slope beta, this was the case when phi was different, for phi was zero. That means these curves are for cohesive soils. While in this case, when phi is greater than zero. So this is the case when phi equal to is greater than zero. And in this case, uh, this is uh, for angle of internal friction. So naturally, when the you have the angle of internal friction is increasing, then bearing capacity factor is increasing for a given value of slope. Okay. And again, there are two cases. One is d by b equal to zero, which is the solid line, and d by b equal to one. So that means uh, when d by b equal to one is the solid line, uh, dotted line, when d by b equal to one, then it is expected that bearing capacity factor will increase because depth of footing is increasing. Okay. And the effect is shown here for 30 degree, where value of phi is 30 degree, 40 de degree, and 45 degree. For three values, you have six curves here. So uh, for each angle of internal friction, you have two curves. One is below d by b equal to zero and d by b equal to one. So what can be observed in these curves? That bearing capacity factor is decreasing with slope. These factors are also, as expected, decrease with the angle of internal friction phi. They also decrease when the depth of embedment get reduced. So this was as expected. But using this chart, you can determine bearing capacity factor NCQ and N, uh, N gamma Q from and once this is known, then you can use in your design. However, before that, you need to work out. What is the inclination of slope? What is the value of d by b? What is the ns? All these things are important. Okay. Now coming to the second case, when uh, your slope, uh, your footing is placed on the top of slope, and at a set by distance b. In the same way, the the first chart is giving you the value of ncq with, with the distance of foundation from a is a slope. That means the value of b. But this value of b is normalized with width of the footing b, b divided by b should be applicable for when the n s equal to zero. But when n s is greater than zero, then they have used b by h, h where h is the height of the slope. Okay. So uh, in this case, you have two normalization for n s equal to zero, b by b and b by h. It should be read for this axis. Now coming to the bearing capacity factors, there are, uh, you know, uh, these factors are for stability number n s equal to 0 to 4. Okay. And for each value, let's say for when stability number is 0, then you have two curves. One is solid line, which is for d by b equal to 0. Another is dotted line, which is d by b equal to 1. Within these two solid, solid lines, these have been drawn for slope angle starting 0, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay, so this dotted line, you could see 1, 0 degree, 30 degrees, 60 degree. Uh, this is going to call 60 degree, and this will be kind of 90 degree. So these different curves are there. Then, similarly, you have, uh, this was the inclination of slope. So according to, you can select the, whatever the inclination of slope, and then vehicle structures can be defined from now coming to the second part, that is n gamma q. Again, y-axis you can see is on the log scale, while distance of foundation from A is of slope has been uh, put in terms of ratio that is b by b, and you have here uh, inclination of slope beta, angle of internal friction phi. So all these you have 0, 30 degree, uh, this 20, 40. So all these, what is this? This you have. 30 degree and 40 degree is angle of internal friction. While inclination of slope is given here, that is 0 degree, 20 degree. So naturally, when the angle of internal friction increases, 
the factor n gamma q will increase. However, when the inclination of the slope, that is beta increases, then it is expected that bearing of this factor will decrease. So this is it. So this way we can determine the value of the bearing gap is factors using these charts. And we will discuss one numerical examples on this. Now coming to the second uh, theory of, uh, that is proposed by Sol Hansen and Vesey. Hansen work on this uh, in 1970, proposed a following relationship for the ultimate bearing capacity of a continuous foundation at the age of the slope. And what is the equation? QU equal to C and C lambda C beta plus Q and Q lambda Q beta plus half gamma B and gamma lambda gamma beta. So there is only a small difference uh, in this equation, the last equation we have discussed, that Hansen and Vesic have introduced three more parameters, lambda C beta, lambda Q beta, lambda gamma beta, to take care of the effect of slope. Earlier, what we have done? We have reduced the bearing capacity factor NC, NQ, and N gamma. Basically, we uh, made of a club. NQ was uh, eliminated. And then we, whatever the new factor have come. So on those new, new factors, there were charts that according to your slope, you can determine the NC, NQ, and N gamma. Here, we have separate out those factors. So here, lambda C beta, lambda Q beta, and lambda gamma beta are called slow factors. And for example, lambda C beta will be given by this relation, NQ lambda Q beta minus one, divided by NQ minus one, where NQ itself is nothing but NQ is uh, the dimensionless number. And for phi greater than zero, if phi equal to zero, in that case, lambda C beta can be directly defined one minus phi beta, phi by plus. And here, beta is nothing but the slope of uh, uh, the angle of the slope, which is so. If you are representing pi in radian, then it should be in terms of radian. So then, lambda q beta uh, equal to lambda gamma beta. If we substitute this number, then what you will have that both are lambda q, lambda c beta is given from this relation. Well, lambda q beta, lambda gamma beta is given from this relation 1 minus 10 beta square for beta greater than four, less than 45 degree. And if it is greater than 45 degree, then we have a different treatment. Here, let's work on this even for less than 45 degree. If I have beta equal to 45 degree, then 10 45 will be 1. And in that case, at 45 degree, lambda q beta and lambda gamma beta will be simply 0. Then what you have, once you have this value zero and you substitute in the equation on the equation 2a, then you left only with the first term. Q in these terms is gamma dm as we discussed earlier. Okay. Now continuing that, we have talked about how to determine lambda c beta and uh, lambda q beta that is known to us, lambda gamma beta. But how to determine the value of n gamma, which is coming in the equation, is not discussed. So we, we need to find the value of n gamma and then according. n gamma is given for phi equal to zero condition. That means when you don't have, uh, the, that means for cohesive soils, basic pointed out that with the absence of weight due to the slope, the bearing capacity factor n gamma has a negative value and can be given as. So n gamma is minus twice into sine beta, where beta is again uh, the, angle, uh, the inclination of the slope. So that means uh, they have linked, basic have linked the value of n gamma with the slope angle. So once you determine the value of n gamma from this, then the nc in simply 5.14 and nq equal to 1. So using n equal to 5.14, n q equal to 1, and n gamma, which is given from the above equations, and then substitute the other numbers. So what you have is q equal to c and c. So n c has been put as 5.14 multiplied by whatever uh, you have this here. So n c should be multiplied by this factor, which is given here, lambda c beta, 1 minus pi beta, pi plus. So what you have here, 1 minus pi beta, this pi plus 2 will be simply 5.14. Okay, so this is the case C and C. 
then you have two gamma df uh, q into you have q q into uh, you have q into uh, nq into lambda q beta. so you have nq and nq lambda q beta is given here one minus beta square and q is gamma df gamma df one minus ten beta square is there all right and uh, this is nq is also four because nq value has been substituted here from nq value has been substituted from here this nq here n gamma is minus by sine beta gamma df all right so you have q equal to gamma df as mentioned earlier and lambda q beta is put lambda q beta equal to 1 minus 10 beta square in which 10 beta square so yeah nq has been put one yeah nq value is put here one nc is 5.14 and yeah it is given here so for five equal to zero condition nc is 5.14 nq is equal to one and therefore this equation 2a will tax the following form this equation will becomes nc you have substituted one minus five beta 5.14 and nq has been substituted here and in meanwhile you have uh, q gamma df and nq is 1 then finally uh, that n gamma is substituted by sine beta and then you end up here in this equation so finally for Hansen and Vesey have proposed that q mu that is ultimate very capacity can be determined from this relation uh, so you have a coefficient of c you have a coefficient of gamma df and then finally gamma b here so all these coefficients depends only on beta that is the inclination of slope so this was the proposal by Hansen and Vesey and you could see due to the presence of the slope this value get decreased for example if you have beta equal to 45 degree you can have 2 into 45 degree means 90 90 can be written as pi by 2 and pi by 2 is nothing but pi by 2 is 1.57 so this can be decreased and can work out and the same things here uh, because beta is known so 10 beta is also known and and for further equations. So this was about Hansen and Vesey. Then further, limit equilibrium analysis and limit equilibrium and uh, you know the uh, solutions have been carried out. And what has been carried out? This was done by Saran, Sud, and Hana in 1989 at the University of Turkey. And they have provided a solution to determine the ultimate gaining capacity of shallow continuous foundations on the slope, top of the slope using the limit equilibrium and limit analysis approach and according to this theory for a strict foundation again this equation is my ultimate gain capacity and this equation is same as we discussed in the Jaggi story where nc and q and n gamma are the very different and the numerical values are given in that table so these nc and q and n gamma are uh, bearing capacity factors and let's see how these bearing capacity factors get changed or affected when you have this presence of slope. So here, the first table is telling you that this bearing capacity factors is based on Saran, Seed, and Honda's analysis of 1988. But you have this is in this table only factor NC has been given, which is for different values of beta ranging from 10 degree, 20, 30, 40, 50 degree, and df by b equal to initially it was zero then it has been considered this is zero to run so then you have this here df by b equal to one and one so when df by b equal to one you can use this and then you need to see the setback distance setback distance is also if you have the case then your death factor is also one and setback distance is also one in that case you can find the bearing capacity from this column, this row, and accordingly, whatever, like you know, that you have factor NC according to factor NC, so, uh, uh, according to this uh, beta degrees angle, you can determine this. Uh, so, uh, what is called soil friction angle phi, which is in degrees. This is the, uh, here, so you have 40, 45. But what is this? This is these numbers are uh, friction angle, which is in phi. So ranging from 30 to 40 degree. This way you can find the value of NC from this table. So in this case, this 
this table is basically telling because always you know that NC will be a function of phi in any case. But here, the effect of beta, that is the slope angle, uh, from in the range between 10 to 50 is taken care on uh, NC, as well as BF by B equal to, it could be zero or it could be one. Suppose if your df by b or b by e, either 0 or 1, if they are lying in, in, in between, then you can still use this table by using the interpolation. And this was a story for nc. For other uh, two parameters, for nq and n gamma, this is given here. For nq, what you would see, the range of the slope is not uh, wide because the uh, one condition. Uh, here is required that the value of uh, beta can't be more the uh, uh, friction angle phi. So that condition need to be satisfied whenever, whenever you use this. Uh, then for different values of beta, 10, 20, 30 degree, you can pick up one value of beta and then uh, soil friction angle phi is, is ranging from 10 to 40 degree. So accordingly, whatever the angle of uh, internal friction is known to you, Select that angle and upper, let's say for 30 degree angle, then using 30 degree uh, beta, then you get the value here, 8.98. Then similarly for 20 degree, you get uh, more. As you decrease the slope, then this uh, bearing capacity factor will increase, which is happening here. So this was for NQ. Similarly for N gamma also you have, but for N gamma you have more data compared to NQ. So this, uh, these tables have a different range of the data. And that was, at the time, the uh, carry by Saran, Seed, and Honda. So whatever the, their experimental work, and so that has been uh, you know, uh, presented here. So this was the case. Now continue with that. Uh, there are others also, as we discussed, that uh, Jemper line in 1988, reported the results of 215 centrifuge tests on continuous foundations located at the top of a slope of cohesionless sand. And based on these tests, uh, 250 tests, Jemper line proposed that the ultimate gain capacity of the continuous foundation can be expressed as Q mu equal to half gamma V n gamma. Here, one thing is important to understand that while this equation is, looks very simple, for ultimate bearing capacity, but it is assumed here that C is zero. That means this is applicable only for sandy soil. And what the Gemper line proposed that was based on the their results of 215 centrifuge uh, test. And uh, this was as mentioned, it is for cohesionless sand. So the equation proposed based on 215 tests is this. Now we need to see what is the effect of a slope on this factor n gamma q because there is only one factor. First of all, this, this theory is applicable for cohesionless soils. That means sand only. That is one thing. Second thing that this is ultimate bearing capacity is given from this relation. But in this relation, how the value of n gamma q get changed with the slope? So that is given here. What have the extending the work of Jemper 1988, 1988 shields in 1990 normalize the n gamma q values proposed by Jemper line in the following formula. So what is there if you divide by this n gamma q, n gamma q r. So on the right hand side you have this equation. So it appears very long equation. But let's see if I don't have any slope, then beta will be simply zero. And in this case, 10, 0, 0. So you can still, once you put beta equal to 0, it must simplify. This factor will go, only one will be left out. And here in the second factor, again, it will be this ratio will be 1 for 10 beta equal to 0. And once 10 beta equal to 0, this factor will be also gone. So you will left again 2 by 2, that is 1. And this way, this equation is very much simplified. Uh, when beta equal to zero. Uh, and when beta equal to zero, this is non-dimensional. And this will become, uh, when beta equal to zero, this term will automatically will be zero. So this equation is most simplified when you use 
for the, uh, that beta equal to zero means there is no slope. Now, n gamma q are in the situations the value of n gamma q for a reference continuous foundation at the surface of level ground. That is when df by equal to zero and b by b is, is infinity. So, for so these two conditions, when the surface and the df by b equal to zero and b by is infinity, in that case, then n gamma q r is a reference number basically, and that number is dimensionless bearing uh, capacity factor. The magnitude of n gamma q r can be given by the following relationship. It can be found out uh, 10 to the power 0 0.1159 to 5 and minus 2. And then same thing is here 10 minus uh, 0.34 minus 0 0.2 into log. Here one need to understand that in this equation, phi is in degrees, not in radian, and b given is in inches. So b is not in centimeter in this equation, b is in inches. So what do we do? We find the value of for given situation, for given value of phi and uh, given value of b, we can determine the value of n gamma q r. Once you determine the value of n gamma q r, then using equation 1a, you can find the value of n gamma. And once n gamma q is known, then you can determine the uh, ultimate bearing capacity from this equation. So, this was about uh, what is the upper line and the letter shields from a centrifuge test. Now, continue with that. Graham et al. Uh, did some theoretical analysis and presented the value of n gamma q and how the uh, effect of depth is on these uh, numbers. So let's see that Graham et al. in 1988 provided a solution for the bearing capacity factor for a cell of continuous foundation on the top of the slope in granular soil based on the method of stress characteristics. Okay. The failure zones in the granular soil for embedment, that is BF by B, and setbacks B by B assumed for this analysis are shown in figure. So what you have here, the first of all, the failure zones, uh, and this is for the embedment D by B and setback distance as B by B, which has been assumed for this analysis. Let's see here. Uh, in this figure, first figure, what in both figures you have n gamma q, and both figures are for df by b equal to zero. In this case, b by b equal to zero is you know, have this uh, this curves belong to this b by b. Then capital B by B in this case has been this is for different value of phi 30 degree, 35 degree. So b by b equal to 0 0.5 is for this uh, dotted line, and b by b equal to zero for other lines. So as the value of b is increasing, so you could see that uh, when the value of b increases, then at the same time. This bearing capacity factor also increases. So these curves are for different value of phi. One can see that as the value of phi increases, uh, if I see here, put it, put it, it is the maximum here. So when this is increasing, then this factor is increasing. Otherwise, when this is decreasing, then this factor is also decreasing. So this was the case when you have beta, uh, you know that uh, this. Uh, your b by b equal to zero surface putting and embedment with small embedment b by equal to 0.5. But if you have the further large embedment, uh, this here uh, the setback distance is increased. Let's see uh, further. So here setback distance has been already defined in the uh, let go through this figure where the setback distance has been defined uh, in the first figure. Yeah, you could see in this first figure b divided by b will give the ratio, but this ratio will be also increasing when you increase the setback distance. So effect of setback distance is also sh shown in this figure. And the, that effect in this table, yeah. So if the effect of setback distance is simply saying that for the same value of phi, when setback distance is higher, like for example, b by equal to 0 0.5 instead of 0, then for the same value of beta, this increase and see. In the Same thing is here that you could see that uh, what is this b by b 
equal to one solid line and dotted line. So dotted line first of all is uh, above the solid line for the same value of phi, which was expected. And you could see in this curve that we set up like basically set by distance this way because uh, it is one and two. So when it is two, it increases. And at the same time, we see the effect of beta that is slow angle on this value also. Continue with that, Graham earlier chart was for dF by v equal to zero. Then the same chart has been repeated for dF by v equal to one. And these are very wide, very clear. So one can see that first of all, when the effect of uh, the damping uh, this beta, which is your basically slope angle, is increasing, in that case, the value of uh, this factor n gamma q will continuously decrease. For irrespective of the type, uh, irrespective of the angle of internal friction, so it will decrease. Then you have the uh, difference between set by distance and here, what you're showing. So as a result, due to the set by distance between zero and five increases, then set by distance increases for the same angle beta, your n, n, c, n, c, n gamma q, Will increase. So this was for the uh, this was the first case was for uh, when you have uh, v by v equal to zero zero point five, and this case is when v by v equal to one and two. Okay. So these are the list of references which we have used in this presentation. First reference is a book by Puja, uh, Professor Rajay M. Das in USA, and the title is Cellular Foundations Bearing Capacitance Element, and this is a very good book. On slope stability. Then what you have are uh, the jumper line, which was used uh, centrifugal modeling and test for cellular foundation, it is a paper in processing of PSC. Then Graham et al. You have this in 1988. So he worked on stress characteristics also for cellular footings. Then you have Hansen and Vashik, which we have discussed. Merov one is the, the first one who have decided, and Sarah. Sue and Handa are for working in the same So I thank you very much for your kind attention.